Hi everybody, this is Tim Erden, author of Statistics in Plain English, and in this video I'm going to describe how to read Appendix H. Appendix H has the critical values for uh, the family of chi-square distributions, um, and what you need to do to use it is first decide what your alpha level is going to be for your test. These are the alpha levels down here ranging from 0.001 to 0.10. Here's 0.05, which is the familiar one. Um, and um, then what you need, what you're gonna do is go over here and figure out what your degrees of freedom are. So in a chi-square test of independence, the degrees of freedom is the number of rows that you have minus one times the number of columns that you have minus one. So the rows is determined by um, you know, a chi-square test of independence is when you're looking at two categorical variables. Um, so say that you're one of your independent categorical variables is gender, and that's your rows. So gender may have two categories. Um, so uh, the number of rows minus one would be one. Two minus one is one. And let's say that in the other categorical variable, you have um, ethnicity and say that in your study you have uh, four different ethnic groups and that's your columns variable. So the number of columns you have is four. Um, the degrees of freedom for the columns is four minus one, which is three. So the degrees of freedom for the chi-square test is rows minus one, so two minus one is one, times columns minus one, four minus one is three, so the degrees of freedom we would have for that test would be one times three equals three. So that's right here. And the critical value for a chi-square test of independence with an alpha level of 0.05 and three degrees of freedom would be 7.82. So if the observed chi-square value that you calculate or that you get through a stats program is greater than 7.82, it would be statistically significant. You would say and there is um, a difference, a significant difference between the observed frequencies and the expected frequencies in your contingency table. So pretty straightforward. This is how you read Appendix H. And for those of you that have used previous editions of the book, um, Appendix H used to be Appendix E but we had to change it to Appendix H with a new addition because I've added some new appendices, uh, new tables. So that's it for reading Appendix H.